Here is uh, the five on Fox. I mean, frankly, if you want to talk about political salience, you do your uh, attempt at uh, getting rid of the filibuster. You don't get rid of it. Should have been done a long time ago. You do your attempt at the uh, filibuster. Uh, and then what you do is you just play uh, this clip from Fox News over and over again. <laughs> if you really want to show how completely insane Republicans are when it comes to voting rights. Let's be clear. One of the key provisions of the voting bills, there's a couple of them that the Democrats want to pass, but in both of them, is a fix of Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. The Voting Rights Act was passed in the mid-1960s with pressure from millions of people marching, many of whom were led by Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah, this is disgusting what you're doing right now. How are you politicizing this? <laughs> Listen to the Fox Five. Oh. Crush Top it. that, Geraldo. Top that. <laughs> well, I think that the people that invoke the name of Martin Luther King for a political, bald-faced political motive really are low, lowbrow. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot invoke that name and what he did and that period for a, a law that says you have to have a voting ID, a voter ID, that every voter has to have an ID. Why is that Jim Crow? Why is why is requiring or requesting you to have a voter ID to prove who you are when you vote? How is that George Wallace? How is that Jefferson Davis? How is that Strom Thurmond? You know, it is really beyond the pale. And I, you know, I agree about the Joy Reeds of the world. There is plenty of room to disagree without labeling being reduced to labeling your opponent as a racist. Why? Why, why is that racist? What? Uh, you know, requiring a voter ID. You know, it's just like the civil rights issue of our time is black on black crime. Let me hear Joy Reid speak about that once in a while. And then I'll, I'll, I'll give her more slack. Geraldo, you said it was lowbrow, but for Nancy Pelosi, it's very highbrow. <laughs> and she knew Thomas Jefferson personally. All right, let's uh, put aside the, their... What are they talking about? Well, they're they're making Nancy Pelosi's old, she's old jokes. Yeah. Oh, which I mean, <laughs> she is. But um, let's be clear here. I mean, after he says that uh, the the main civil rights um, um, a problem of our time is black on black crime. Uh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but just to remind Geraldo, who apparently is already living in his own private Florida, where he's not uh, does not forced to read history that might make him feel bad about himself. The Voting Rights Act was the end of the Jim Crow era in terms of voting. That's why the Voting Rights Act was passed. It was to inhibit the ability of specific states and all states, both specific states and all states, from passing laws that would have an imp a racially disparate impact on one's ability to vote. And I was specific about that. There was already laws on the books that said you cannot say black people can't vote. But the Supreme Court allowed for, for voting restrictions that were supposedly targeted at what ultimately was a surrogate. The poll tax. For black people. For example. Poll tax. Yeah. Uh, literacy tests. Um, and now you can look at that today. Voter ID laws. Voter ID laws where you may have segments of the population that don't drive. They don't get IDs. Or maybe they didn't have birth certificates. And... Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, reauthorized by Republicans and Democrats alike in 2007. Again. In 2013, the Supreme Court said they need to rework on that preauthorization. There were 13 states, I think it was, or maybe there was uh, uh, 11 states and 16 counties 
across those states that needed to have their voting changes pre-cleared by the Department of Justice because they had a history, a naked, disturbing history of disenfranchising people of color and other immigrants from voting. Incidentally, all of those states, not all of them, the vast majority of them, made voting more difficult the moment the Supreme Court um, got rid of that uh, uh, pre-clearance. But the bottom line is, when you talk about that's not returning us to Jim Crow, it returned us to Jim Crow, like literally. It's interesting, too, how conservatives do this often. They deflect from, they rely on this, like, fiction that political reality, they they pretend that political realities are static, right? Like this isn't Bull Connor, as if we haven't progressed and evolved, and the racism and the way that it uh, is portrayed or the way that it manifests itself hasn't changed since Bull Connor was around. That's the only way that they can. Right. In other words, they, they no, can, nobody's right. got a uh, a hose. Nobody's nobody's using a fire hose. How can it be racism? Right. Yeah, what year did that um, impulse and desire to disenfranchise people stop would be a good question for these people. Like, OK, I guess we did the civil rights, the voting rights stuff too long. What year could we have stopped it earlier? I think Anthony Scalia said probably probably prior to 2007, at least, because he said that they were it was the senators were afraid to vote against it. And so the Supreme Court had to rush in and reverse it because the senators were afraid to vote against it. They looked into the hearts and minds of the senators. which is, That's that's very strict constructionism oh, there. Yes. Oh, yes. That's uh, thank you very much. Um, so someone's got to uh, school Geraldo on this. Well, I guess I just did. 